So uh, I'm Sarah Lippincott, Senior Consultant at Born Digital. Um, as Brian uh, mentioned earlier this morning, I was uh, involved in the laser project for Islandora 7. And um, I wanted to talk to you today about a little bit about laser and a little bit about thinking about Islandora as um, as a next generation institutional repository, kind of moving beyond the some of the work that we did in laser. Laser was a Mellon funded initiative to make strategic enhancements to Islandora Scholar and its sub modules with the end goal of creating a turnkey Islandora based IR platform. You can find out some more about that project at the link there. And it focused on uh, some key areas uh, that were that were uh, designed to achieve some level of feature parity with existing commercial and and other uh, institutional repository solutions. So things like content discovery, making repository content discoverable in outside of the silo of the repository, improving indexing and metadata portability, for example, um, improving uh, metadata export options, uh, implementing an out of the box solution for scholar profiles so that authors can, could um, uh, have a, a, an aggregated collection of their own, their own research. Analytics to collect data at the object and entity level so that to enable things like sending out readership reports to authors that examine their, uh, that allow them to assess the, the impact of their publications. And uh, self-deposit workflows that make it easier for scholars to uh, and students to get research into the repository and for librarians to administer the repository. So as I was preparing this presentation, I, my imagination got away from me a little bit and I wanted to think about how, how as we, I'm, I'm really excited by all of the work that's going on to get institutions into Islandora as an institutional repository. As Brian um, and Seth discussed this morning, how, what, are the, what, is the, uh, what are the options that we can make available to the community to get people into Islandora as an institutional repository now with minimal configuration, uh, with the goal of broadening access to, to knowledge and to the research outputs of, of, uh, of universities. Um, but my imagination also, you know, led me to to want to share some thoughts and questions about how might this translate into a next generation of what an institutional repository is and what it does. Um, so I think the challenge is that we see inst institutional institutional repositories have not fully realized their potential and function mainly as passive recipients of the final versions of their user, users' conventionally published research outputs. So how do we move beyond this function of the institutional repository as the kind of final resting place for research outputs um, and reimagine IR features to better achieve all of the functions of scholarly communication? registration, certification, awareness, and not just the archiving portion, which we have architect, which many solutions are architected to, to prioritize, and that we do quite well in, in, in many ways. Um, but are there, there ways that we can make the institutional repository a more dynamic environment, a more open and network aware environment, uh, and one that is lively and, and vibrant. For some context, uh, I think um, it's important to think about broader trends in how libraries are engaging with their users and seeing their mission and their role. So concepts like the inside out library, that libraries are no longer solely uh, portals for, for um, sharing uh, research that they collect, uh, content that they collect and curate uh, and and share out with a closed community within the within a campus uh, context, but that they're actually pushing knowledge and information outwards uh, and taking part in a in a 
global network of scholarly resources. Um, that they are repositories of knowledge and data that can be exploited and analyzed by humans, machines, and algorithms, and that they are enabling the creation of new knowledge um, so that libraries are not just fulfilling this stewardship function and this preservation function, but enabling the creation of new knowledge, new solutions to the world's greatest challenges. And that they're building tools that are extensible, that are designed for, uh, for other for collaboration, distributed collaboration, and achieving a more open and innovative scholarly knowledge ecosystem at scale. Some of the shifts that I think are coming about as a result of this, thinking about the library's mission and the role of the institutional repository are the idea of silo to network. So the repository as one node in a scholarly ecosystem that needs to talk to other nodes, that needs bi-directional communication or needs the ability to um, dynamically interact with other nodes rather than being a, a, a static silo of, of information uh, for, for long-term preservation purposes and, and access to a, a static uh, end product. Stock to flow. So again, repository content as a living asset uh, that a deposit in a repository does not mean that uh, this is the end of the life cycle of this object. And uh, a shift from human to machine audiences. So repository users accessing information in new ways and, and seeing um, machines as, as a primary audience for scholarly uh, repositories. So this, the silo to network kind of shift, um, this idea of an integration with an ecosystem of research environments and tools requires metadata exchange between systems to facil facilitate research activities. Um, it um, empowers distributed collaboration. So seeing this idea of the repository itself as a site of collaboration, where scholars are actively building, building knowledge, working across teams that are geographically distributed, uh, working with resources that are, are um, distributed chronologically, uh, that, uh, or that are working with resources that are um, housed in other repositories. And then an integration of tools, uh, integrating repository, the repository with tools that are that scholars are already using in their in their research practices. So, whereas our our near term goals for IR features are things like making sure that our research is well indexed, our scholarly repository content is well indexed in Google Scholar, and that it can be passively harvested. It's open for passive har it's open for harvesting um, through our standard protocols, which are really both really important and essential features thinking speculatively about future, um, future features of an institutional repository might include things like integration with academic recommendation systems that use machine learning to identify relevant content and actively push out notifications to scholars of, of new content uh, in their area of study. Or things like support for overlay publishing models where author deposited preprints are actively can um, authors who deposit preprints in an institutional repository can actively submit them to journals um, by with the push of a button um, where they can undergo peer review and and formal publication um, or where journals can can uh, vice versa where journals can query the repository looking for preprints of interest to review Um, this shift from stock to flow, um, a reconceptualization of repositories as focused on use and reuse rather than archiving. Um, so conceptualizing data or other content as a living asset and the um, and enabling features like versioning, commenting, updating, and linking across resources. Uh, an assumption that that repository content is not static but will change over time and is designed to for active engagement. 
um, which might include annotation, it might include within peer, rapid peer review within the system, it might include um, uh, publishing uh, workflows for, for rapid publishing. This is something that we've seen taken off, the interest in uh, has, has really taken off in um, the, uh, in our current uh, context of, of a global pandemic where rapid publication of research results and communication of research results has taken on a new urgency. So in the near term, our development priorities look like self-deposit of PDF and other static files, which is really important to facilitate ease, ease of deposit for scholars. Next generation institutional repositories might support publishing workflows that simultaneously produce digital first formats and PDFs uh, that support natively support versioning, uh, that support data visualization, embedded data visualization, annotation, real-time collaboration on documents and other content, um, and integration with tools that scholars use to create data, code, and literature. Um, and that last one really isn't even that speculative when you look at projects uh, like Zenodo or Figshare that already integrate with GitHub um, and other places where scholars are producing, maintaining code and data, um, and that can then be, um, and then you can archive a version of that in directly in your um, Figshare, uh, in a Figshare repository. Um, current near-term developments like emailed author reports, what would that, what might that look like in a next generation repository? Um, might be more like linked data notifications that track all the interactions with your publication and push notifications out to you uh, and that talk to other systems. Uh, and finally, this human to machine shift. Um, repositories need to enable researchers to use the latest database and text mining tools to explore resources to uh, automatically identify new concepts that are embedded in research and identify where novel con contributions can be made. Um, and, and repositories should make resources available in formats that support the broadest range of methodologies for scholarly inquiry, uh, uh, which includes things like text mining um, at, a, at a large scale of uh, full text resources in a, in a repository, um, uh, as an example. So in the near term, our, our you know, development uh, priorities have been metadata export, making sure that we have good machine, structured machine readable metadata. Um, next generation, the next generation goal might be support for text and data mining at scale, um, integration of machine learning powered search and discovery tools into the repository that, that leverage all of the data available to deliver um, more, uh, deliver more nuanced re search results uh, or make uh, novel connections between content in the repository. Um, so I wanted to end with a couple of parting questions or thoughts. Um, uh, uh, and actually one more example on the, this kind of support for text and data mining at scale. Um, uh, tools that actually do some level of metadata generation or, or extraction on ingest into the repository. So again, machine learning tools, computer vision tools that um, create metadata automatically when objects are, are ingested into the repository to make them more discoverable, more usable by researchers. Um, so a couple of parting questions. Um, is is feature parity with other IR solutions the end goal for a repository in Islandora? Um, I think in, in some ways the answer is yes, in that we our, our goal is to, I think our collective goal is to um, make more open knowledge available to uh, showcase the intellectual outputs of our respective institutions um, and to, um, to encourage uh, knowledge production and and reuse. Um, but I also encourage us to think about what has made other IR solutions successful and is it the any individual feature or even set of features that has made Digital Commons or Figshare or um, Zenodo or other repositories 
uh, what has encouraged adoption, what has encouraged their success and growth. And I would argue it's not any individual feature or even the aggregate features, um, but their actual scale. Um, and that we need to be thinking about how community collaboration can achieve a type of distributed scale to really encourage adoption, to encourage this vibrant ecosystem of, of institutional repositories and scholarly content um, to move away from the, uh, the institutional repository as uh, an archive, as, a, as an attic, uh, and we'll move it more into this idea of a lively workshop um, of content. Can we achieve, are there ways as a community that we can achieve some, some of the benefits of that scale without having to rely on a centralized ownership model um, like like digital commons or or figshare or zenodo where um, where one entity ends up kind of having centralized control over this content and that entity or organization may not share our community values um, so i um i hope that i've uh, uh not gone too far um off topic and have maybe um given uh, you all some food for thought and uh, i'd be happy to take a couple of questions. And I also have some links here to other resources uh, uh, about the, the kind of future of, of repositories and um, encourage you all to, to take a look if you're interested in more. <laughs>